What is up, guys, and welcome to the Visual Wood Podcast, episode number 19. 19. 19. So, how was Christmas for you? Yeah. Did you get any good gifts? Any? Any? Uh, me? Um, I didn't get any gifts. No, well, it's not technically Christmas. What are you talking about? I sent you a Christmas gift. Oh, yeah, you did? Uh-huh. Did it not arrive in the post? It sure didn't, you liar. Wow, I don't know why it wouldn't have. I mean, I, I, I packaged it up. I spent a lot of money and hard work on that on that gift. I'm sorry, uh, man. La- hard work? Oh, so you tell me you, you made you made me something? Did you make well, me a Christmas I, card? I, I wrapped it. You wrapped it, so that's that's hard work for you. Yeah. If you think about it, for Christmas, why, <laughs> why else do we wrap things? It's because it's a commercial holiday, and the wrapping is the only effort people really go to now. That's good. Yeah, everything's ordered online, That's gift why wrapped, it's... and then shipped to the person. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> gift wrapped now, so even that's commercial. And, and people then... get offended if you don't wrap, and it's because that's like the only personal touch people put in anymore on gifts, unless you're actually thoughtful about it. And now it's going to be, you know, basically flown there by a robot because of Amazon is doing that new Amazon primary drones, thing. yeah. Wow. <laughs> and they're just going to fly your gift directly to you on a... Christmas Merry Day. Christmas. <laughs> Happy holidays. Ah, 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 as it like floats off into the distance. Have a happy Kwanzaa. What is, what, what is, is it like? You, you tell me you're not, you, you're not going to see like a bunch of black dudes. Yes, I'm going to say it. A bunch of black dudes. You see that don't, thing? Don't say you're it. Saying, don't you're, say you're, it. You're gonna, don't. You're going to see the Amazon drone land in the hood and you can see a, ba- a bunch of black dudes go and, ro- and just take that thing apart and sell Dude. it. I genuinely think you pushed the line of what it is to be racist. Like, you cannot play the I'm black card and say stuff like that. Like, yes, I can. Jesus, that's like you. That's, there's a, there is a line. I'm sure you're crossing it in many people's opinions. Oh, Holy yeah, hell. yeah. You you need to see the conversations that me and my wife have. And not just about black. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I apologize to all. Um, uh, the, ho- people, the just hood people, rats, just the hood rats out there. <laughs> I apologize. GG. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, <clears throat> yeah. Do we? What? I mean, what, what are we doing today? <laughs> We're doing more topics. So, topics. what do we have in the goodie bag? Oh, that's today? quite good. In the stocking. Do yes. you have a stocking this year? Um, I actually do have a stocking. It's not hanging up at the moment, but yeah. <gasps> Oh my god, we haven't touched it for so long. Dude, your decorations are off, aren't they? Uh, of of course they are. You know are. where I'm going with this. You know where I'm going with this. Of course they are. So? So? Oh, so, the, the light from the Christmas tree is so bright. No, what, what are you talking... No, 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 no. Is there, is there, is there, uh, is there uh, presents on there is what you're trying no, to... No, what? no. Are there any bells? Are there any bells anywhere? No, there's no bells. Fake bells? This? There's fake bells. Could you like bang on the fake bell for the last question bell? Um, I would if if I had fake bells. So you don't even have fake <laughs> bells. Wow, this is this is the production quality. Okay, okay, there you go. Ding 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 ding. There goes the okay. fake bell. Oh, that's yeah, that's good. It doesn't sound any different to a real bell. You you would have me <laughs> fooled. Completely full. Only we can waste the first five minutes of a podcast. Only we. I think we are talented. I think we have a future in radio. <laughs> Dude, radio. Oh my god, that's like a job I would genuinely love to be in. Radio. Come on. Yeah, wooden Pretty potatoes. Nice here. Wood, wooden, wait, is there an hour of the day or Wednesday with wooden potatoes? Yeah. I would always have that that like crappy jingle thing. It would just be, you're listening to Wooden Potato Wednesday. Like, and then I'd be like, so we're gonna listen to some smooth jazz here, with blah blah blah. I would no, I would do, I would be a talk show. I would be one of those relationship talk shows where people can like I'm an agony aunt, and they could like call <laughs> call into me and uh, like t- discuss me with their problems. And I would favor people with outlandish, you know, stories and requests. Just so that I got uh, more listeners. I I think I think I'll be perfect. I'll be the sound guy. Like I'm the guy that's telling you like from back from the commercials. And when you're talking too long, I have to like knock on on the window on the clear the see through. And I'd like, wave you I'm off. Like, I'd be I'm, like, "This is my show." <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like tapping my wrist, like, "Dude, it's time, it's time. Come come on, get, get stop talking on the topic." Yeah. You're like, 
Damn it, Matt! Shut up! This is my show. But genuinely, <laughs> voice cracks he a little bit when you talk to me, <laughs> and everybody, everybody hears it. It just hears broadcast. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're like, anyways, <laughs> you go back to your radio voice. <laughs> now I just want to be like Frasier. That's that's all it is. Like I I watch Frasier and that Fraz- Frasier. You Frasier, mean? yeah. Fra- yeah. You said Frasier. I know, I did, I did, and I regret it. It's Frasier. This is the kind of thing people, it's like, Frasier. dude, I think the best way to troll online is say stuff like that, and then when people try and call you out on it, really stand by it, and be like, pronunciation doesn't matter, what are you talking about, I'm going to keep saying it, like, people really rage at that, I've never deliberately tried to troll, but like, it's one of those things that almost universally people can just get ticked off by, and it's subtle enough that they wouldn't realise you were trolling them if that's what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. Because they would hate it every time. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, what's going on with the show? <laughs> oh, I, oh, okay. Yeah, anyways, um, the show. So, we have topics just like last week, right? Because it's been a week since we recorded this, right? Of course, yeah. yeah of course. If a week is... How long right. has it been? Like, legit. When did we stop recording the last one? <laughs> no, no. Let's just create this illusion. Okay, I am going to be away for a week. 20 minutes is a the week. 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to be away for a week, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to have to record Visual Wood before we go and that's what you guys asked for last time and I didn't get to deliver cuz I didn't have any time to actually do that. So, we're going to bring you two Visual Woods back to back with all these topics that you gave us back to before. Black. Back 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 to life. Back to reality. Okay. Uh, it's, we're going to we're going to answer all these questions. All right. So, Let's go. So yeah, um, and also uh, I I grabbed a couple of topics like in a futile attempt to do a bit of news or something. This news, of course, therefore is going to be a week out of date. So like one thing I had was going to be that there's a community event going on on Aurora a, a, a Glade on the 26th. Uh, go have fun with that, guys. I know it was a couple of days ago, but if you have a time machine, maybe you can participate in that community event and have some real fun doing their winter stage. Tell me, there's a purpose for you saying that. Um, just that the effort was there, and I want to be, you know, <laughs> I want that to be. Thank you, thank you, thank there you. you. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> that is your your piece that you've added to the show. No, I got a couple more. I got a couple more. It's all a week out of date, but okay, some of it, some of it's okay. Look, okay, so look, okay. We got uh, ArenaNet. ArenaNet posted a new video today, slash seven, eight days ago, um, called "Thank You for an Amazing 2013," where they just edit together a bunch of stuff from the Living Story. Uh, which is kind of cool, uh, kind of fun to see. They didn't actually show off anything new there, but it is a new video you can watch. Okay, whoosh. Next, the game is off again. Oh You'd need a time machine for this one, but the game is on sale again. I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit because the the game's on sale a lot, right? So, what do you think of that? Um, it's always thirty dollars. Oh wait, I mentioned this last time. It's always thirty dollars. This, this is not really a sale. It, it was on a uh, humble indie bundle. It was on a sale by itself. It's on a sale now for uh, for Christmas. It's yeah. always on sale for thirty dollars. There is a reason why. Come on, we all know it. <laughs> we all know it. It's been a, a you know people say I guess more people are playing the game because it's so cheap. I guess, but I mean I don't think people are giving it a try because all this. Like, oh, Guild Wars 2 is bad, blah, 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 blah. It's still there. People are still thinking this. People who have e- not even touched the game are thinking that Guild Wars 2 is bad, um, even though they look at it and it does seem intriguing. Um, it, because of the living story, just kind of messed it up. I mean, they're getting better, but they already chased away a lot of players that were there. They chased a lot of PvPers, a lot of big teams that were there. Um, all chased away. Hopefully, it'll, they'll start to come back uh, next year or this year, depending on when this airs. And, um, <laughs> you know, and, you know, Guild Wars 2 shouldn't be on sale every two seconds. Do you think, what do you think about doing an anti-sale? What is that? It's where it doesn't go down in price. It goes up? It goes up in price. That Guild Wars 2 is now $70 because thing. we feel the value of the box is higher now that we've given so many free updates. <laughs> this is not the same game that we released in 2012. It's now 2014. It's got many more updates to it. And we feel this warrants a higher purchase price. And that would get people talking. And that <laughs> means then when they later go on sale, really, it's just back to what it originally cost at launch. I, I think, really want to just hate on it. But really, like, 
I actually gave it some serious thought. It's actually an interesting concept. No, it's that, not. It, what? It's no. actually an interesting concept that I, I totally think that would happen. And why not? You know, all these free updates that were to- that totally stayed in the game. All of these living story updates that you could go back and play. All a whole year's worth <laughs> of content. You can play right now, straight from the beginning of the story of the Flame and Frost prelude. Are you right. ready to experience Guild Wars 2? Are if you that ready? ever happens, if we ever get a replay of it, if that ever happens, then yeah, okay. But let's not let's not go all sarcastic, you know, in the first ten minutes, right? <laughs> um, also, bong. Next topic, okay? It's like on the Ricky Gervais podcast where like they're giving all these like headlines. To... Never heard of it. Okay, what? <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Um, anyway, Ten Ton Hammers. Uh, oh yeah, so there was a bit of news. Um, basically, Ten Ton Hammer gave Guild Wars Two MMO of the Year. And they gave it to him last year as well. Um, what do you think of that? Do you think that's uh, legit? That was no, <laughs> not le- not 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 legit. But I'm the same. They they've always been big fans of Guild Wars too. If you is it a small site? It's generally a small site, right? Is what you consider I don't think a they're small. that small? No, I don't think so. Eh. They're all things MMO. Right. It doesn't mean they're biggish. There's a lot of wow. sites. Wow. Look, let's not let's not let's not. I'm just saying. And- I'm just saying. If if Okay, let, let me let me choose my words carefully. <laughs> All right, so if a uh, uh, generally if a, a big ish company has retweeted your articles every once in a while, um, than any other MMO site, don't you think that you would have be more inclined to say this is the game of the year, even even if you been playing a lot i'm just saying weren't you more inclined to say you know this is what we like this is what the staff like and especially if it's a small staff more people are playing guild wars 2 it will pick guild wars 2 right so i don't know it, it, it depends on how big the site now if what i'm saying is if ign which is a humongous site or game trailers chose guild wars 2 as mmo of the year would it be more significant than Probably. Then, I mean, okay. That's what, what do you I'm think saying. of massively? What do you think of massively? Massively, massively is not technically small, but they're they're not joyce they're they're joystick, but they're not like joystick. I wanna I can't you can't really tell like it's not a YouTube channel where you can just look at the subscribers or look know, at the just the views. Do you know what massively gave Guild Wars two this year? Um. Um, yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do. Oh, no, I was laughing at it. Oh, because I was looking at it because... Don't say you were laughing at it. No, dude. no, no, Come no, on, no, surprise. no. I was laughing at the list because they gave Elder Scrolls most likely the flop. <laughs> I think that's probably true. In all, in all seriousness, I think that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's funny. Like, I don't disagree or disagree, I don't disagree or agree on it, but, like, because I've played it myself, and I don't think it's a bad game. It, it does have a subscription fee, and, you know, I already went on a rant about that. I'm not going to talk about that. So, <laughs> but um, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it will flop. I think it might still have some audience there, but we'll see what happens. But I, I thought it was funny. But what what did it get again? It wasn't uh, Game of the was it, it wasn't uh, Game of the Year. It was something else. MMO of the Year. It was something else. They gave it Biggest PR Blunder. Oh, that wasn't what you were expecting at all, was it? They they actually gave it a negative award. Um, they gave it, and I think it was because of the taxi cab. I pledge myself to Guild Wars Two campaign thing that they did. Oh, oh, it was so painful to watch. I'm sorry, Irina guys. There's a reason why I did one <laughs> because it was just kind of I don't know. I don't know. People... For me, that stuff was just kind of under my radar. I didn't even really realize. I showed it, was it to you. On. I showed yeah, it to you. Yeah, but then it was like in one ear, what out the other. It just like didn't grab me in any way, and then I totally forgot it existed until it ended. You know? Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, I'm I'm with you there. I paid a little bit more attention than you on it because I I'm the I saw it that day and then forgot about it the next. Like I didn't remember until I saw that video, Alan again. Yeah. So, so what did they say? What did they, exactly did they say? I, I didn't actually see it, but that's the award that they gave it, and I'm, I believe it was because of that uh, specifically. I mean, they could have hounded on something much worse. I mean, it doesn't speak at all to the quality and strength of the game itself, but that was uh, certainly what they gave it. Um, but yeah, like it got some rewards. Uh, awards, you know, it's the end of the year. I think going back to the the Ten Ton Hammer giving them MMO of the year. 
I think, um, yeah, you, you might question that, especially considering it didn't come out this year. But what other MMO, like, what's going on in the MMO space at the moment? Very little, if you think about it. A lot of people are sort of saying, yeah, Guild Wars 2 is probably the best, but only because there's nothing else. Like, we had FF14 and Realm Reborn, which I have no idea how well that's doing. And um, never went heard- as well. I heard it was pretty decent. Um, I didn't get to play it, a chance to play it in, and I, I heard it's like it's really s- the same as everything else. Like the, the very, um, you know, like it's not really easy to get into. I, I mean, I think they made it a lot easier now, but uh, I heard it's it's a lot better than it was, and there's an audience for it. But after that little PR stunt about you know not being able to post videos online and not be able to stream the game. Um, I think some people kind of shied away from it because, yeah, yeah, yeah. and YouTubers didn't really show it off because, you know, people, you know, they're kind of like, okay, you don't want me to post videos about your game? Free, free PR? Okay, so never mind then. Never mind. I won't show people your game. And what about what what about Neverwinter too? Because you played that. I played a lot of Neverwinter, yes. I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, but after I hit end game, I just didn't care to play anymore. The combat was I thought was tight. I thought I love that combat. That combat was amazing. Like you felt when you you hit that enemy and you could when you kill an enemy, you could make them float like there's some type of physics and like you can kill an enemy, like throw them off a ledge even if they're at full health. So you can put like knockbacks and stuff. So it was it was just great. It was just fun to play. And it, that was in the beginning. I'm pretty sure you can't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't do that anymore. I think you, <laughs> you might lose loot by doing that. But you do get a chest at the end, so it doesn't really matter. But, yeah. Yeah, so so so, so are you saying Neverwinter would get your award for best MMO of 2013? Mm, no. no. What would get your, your award? I don't... I'm not going to say... I feel like all right, Guild Wars 2 is the game I play, right? I really like playing Guild Wars 2, but I don't think it's where it needs to be for it to get a, re- a award from from me. I don't I can't pick one. I've played a lot of MMOs. I feel like it's not where it needs to be for me to say it's the best game of the year. May if if wow. I had if I had to pick a game, if I had to pick a game, I would pick Guild Wars 2, right? But I'm just saying, I feel like they need to make improvements to actually say, like, this is the game. Like, you're, you're saying, you're saying, like, like, as someone who plays MMOs, you're saying that it's the best game right now to play. I, absolutely. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be playing it. I, I absolutely would give it my, the award of 2013 because it's of the, the one best I'm game playing. of the year. Yeah. For best MMO of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the okay. others didn't even pique my interest high enough for me to try them out. Guild Wars 2 has maintained my attention for thousands upon thousands of hours now. Like, how can't I recognize that with some kind of, uh, you know, an, an award in in that way if, you know... Like, yeah, I, I absolutely would give it that. And I, I think we can all look and wonder, wonder and say, oh, hey, there's, there's better stuff that could be coming. But to look at it for what it is and the enjoyment that I've got out of it and the value that I've gotten out of it... It would be a, it would be almost impossible for me to give it to something else, you know. There have been other games that I have probably enjoyed okay. more, single player titles. But if it's an MMO category, then yeah. I guess yeah, I I guess yeah. I, I don't know. I'm thinking of it as something different. Hey, there we go. Is, no, does I'm it get th- your award. No, I'm no, I'm thinking of it as something different. I no, I said if I had to pick an MMO, I would pick Guild Wars too, but. If I want to pick a like, I think of it as if you pick a game for this is the, the MMO of the year. I feel like it's like the game of the year because you. I mean, we have channels on it. Like, I feel like it could have been better. Like, I, I feel like they could have done a better job with the game, and that will be considered the best game of the year, the best MMO of the year. But mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna give it to anyone else. No. If I have to pick an MMO, it would be Guild Wars 2, but yeah, that's I don't consider are... it, I don't consider it, like, I feel like it needs to, I, I feel like they made bad choices. I really yeah. feel like they made bad choices, and but that's why I say it like that. Most people do seem to think, yes, I would give it to Guild Wars 2, but because there's nothing better. That's, like, what most people are saying at the moment. That's that's yeah. that's what I'm saying, right? Well, not, not really, that's not what I'm saying, because I love Guild Wars 2, but... 
you, you, you guys get what I'm saying. You guys, I, I'm going I'm to move on before I dig myself into a hole. Right Bong. now. Bong. <laughs> I'm going to dig Bong. So, I love uh, my Guild Wars 2. I just feel like it could be better and it should be better. That's it. Bong. Mom. Okay, so there's something I thought you might find quite interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether uh sunrise really. G- do you get like an aura with sunrise? Like it's got a cool effect yes, and trail. Like you a very light color. Okay. Like, yeah. Like a. You told me coming. once before. It may have even been on this podcast. You told me once before that you've seen um uh players like look like stars, like because they they're just shining so brightly with. No, their it's only one legendary that does that, and that is the the mace, the moot. Okay, but um. I now know how to do that. I know how to stack legendary auras and so that you can have multiple auras all on your character all at once. You can have underwater legendary auras on you while you're above ground and so forth. Uh, pretty interesting. Hold I up, thought, what? Um, what? So I can stack my aura of my uh, my greatsword? Yeah, and you can have it while you're out of combat. You can have it while you've got other weapons equipped. Oh. Or you can stack it the same aura over and 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 over again, like, until it's really bright and really obvious and prominent. So, the way you do this, I thought this was some pretty interesting news. Like, I don't think it's the kind of thing that the devs would be that interested in patching either. Um, But basically, what you do is, you know you can um, sheath or equip a weapon, like, idly. So, you don't have to be in combat, but you can press a button that will get your greatsword out and put you in the combat stance. Did you know that much? Hold up, what? Switch my... What? Yeah, if, if you're just walking around in Lion's Arch, yeah, your greatsword's yeah. attached to your back. Yeah. Yeah, you can press a button to unsheath it and put it in your hands, yeah, without actually being combat. You know that? No. Okay, well, there's this keybind that allows you to do that, okay? So if you hit that keybind, or just use a skill, for God's sake, like, if you just use oh, a skill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant, like, like how you use it to when you dance and stuff like that. I don't know how to do that. Like, okay, yeah, you're talking about unsheath and sheath. Yeah, I understand. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So you get, you get the weapon in your hands like that, and then you go into a tonic and back out of the tonic quite quickly. And what that does is, and then when you unequip the weapon again, that just leaves the aura on you, that transformation, like... I don't want to say bugs it. Well, I guess maybe it is sort of like it bugs it in a weird way. But it will, it will like keep the aura on you no matter where you are. And then maybe you could then swap to your other legendary and you'd have the aura from your other legendary and the stuff. But if you do it over and over and over again, um, slowly your sunrise aura will grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it will be visible to you and anyone else that was in Lion's Arch or the instance while you were stacking in that way. And so everyone else will be able to see if you do it um, and you'll be gl- glowing really, really bright. So, like, you use a tonic, um, like you buy a bunch of tonics or you use an infinite tonic or something that has no cooldown on going in and out. And then you just unequip your weapon and keep spamming the tonic going in and out, in and out, in and out. And eventually, like, you come out of it looking really, really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, like, if you ever want to try that, it seems pretty awesome. I want to try it with my incinerator and just, uh, just have, like, a giant flaming arm and stuff. It seems pretty cool. Wow. That's but, yeah. actually pretty cool. Yeah. For so, sure. that, that's the next C. These are contributions. Bong! There was a blog post recently, one week ago, about... Uh, oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Jobo, Jobotron. Did you read this? Jobotron? No. Yeah, so the robot, Hobotron, and now Ho-Ho-Tron, as he's named. The writers were just talking about how they sort of slowly developed this character. Super funny. I know you love that character. Um, and they it, it really struck me while reading that blog post about how much depth they think about these characters that is just, like, totally missing. Like, did you know that... Um, or oh, you just you can miss. That's you know, why. I, that's why I said it, it's probably not the writers that why the living story just doesn't seem there. It's probably yeah. the, the the transition from the writer's hand and what they can do in game. Well, did you? Well, on the other hand, though, I think um, it's the way that that we're guided to content and stuff. Because in game, did you know when the Queen's Jubilee was going on and they were busking? Like, mm. the guards would tell them to go away and stop busking, and they would actually slowly keep sta- taking steps back further and further away from where they started. And then eventually, the guard would look away or patrol away, like, over a really long period of time, and then they'd just sneak back to their original spot. Like, did you know that was happening? Yeah, 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 I recorded all of it. Yeah. I didn't know any of that. Like, there's so much cool stuff that was going on with these characters that I just had no idea about. There's, there's loads of depth there. That's that-, what, that's what, that was why he was my favorite character. That's the first time I saw him. That was the first oh, time I saw him. Oh, you didn't see him at South Sun. 
No, I didn't see him in Southland. No, I didn't. I didn't know he existed in Southland. I knew he existed there in Hobotron and the Minstrel. And it was just funny to watch him. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> this is so great. And then he, they kept putting him in over and over and over again. I didn't even, I did not know at all. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. So, yeah, uh, he started back there. He was originally built by an Asura called Subdirector Null to bully people into getting jobs on South Sun. And then when the consortium left South Sun, he himself was left jobless. And that's like the joke <laughs> that's there. Like, And now he has become... And wow. now he's this condescending robot that... yeah. And it's his quest to, like, find work or whatever. And then the minstrel came in. D. Guillaume Como, I think is how you say his name. So, yeah, like, and it's cool. They talked about other stuff. I think that, like, one example of where Living Story can be improved is, like, there was an off-screen trial in Divinity's Reach, which is why they ended up in Lion's Arch. And it's like, that we should be able to see that. Like, we should have, during the Tower of Nightmares patch, been able to go to that court in Divinity's Reach and see a little bit of dialogue and a little thing with those guys. They should just be able to implement all of these things so it's not off-screen and there's just these fun things you can do as an aside. But, yeah, um, bong! Last thing as well uh, is there was a live stream yesterday or uh, no today or seven days ago or whenever uh, called the 2013 in retrospect live stream where you can catch a bunch of devs sitting about uh, talking about uh, the year and what they enjoyed most. I don't really have much to comment on from there as well, but that's basically news since we don't have, um, you know, patch news. That's news from Wooden Potatoes. What did you think? Do you like the feature? Um, you, you started off weak, but you, you ended strong. How did I start off weak? What do you mean? The game is on sale, but the sale's now over. Um, that's not weak. You're telling me that's not weak. <laughs> what was the? I other mean, it did start I'm... a conversation that <laughs> literally just like poisoned the beginning of the podcast. There's and now a community everyone thinks event. I, I hate Guild Wars Two now. That's great. It's it's, it's starting off great. First... Dude, I never told you to say anything. I did not have a gun to your head. <laughs> Just a knife to your balls. All right, so so the topics. What do we have? Digging that, digging that that handbag that, that you have there. That purse. My that stocking. Pink purse. My no, stocking. No, your pink purse. St- my pink stocking. Well, last Compromise? time you had a pink purse. What happened to Com- the pink Compromise? purse? Compromise. Pink stocking. Are you using? Are well, you no, using I'm being Christmassy the- for this podcast. Okay. It doesn't have glitter on it. I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't have glitter on it. Did you write your name on glitter in glitter? Yes. <laughs> I used to love those like tubes you could get of glitter that were like glue. They were like thick, like, do you know what I mean? And like it'd be like you uh-huh. know, a purple one or a pink one or a yellow one or a you know turquoise. I'm not one. a girl, so I didn't get any of those things. <laughs> Dude, those things were cool. I've got like loads of arts and crafts like behind me that I desperately want to use for stuff. None of that glitters there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has glitters there. Uh huh. Glitters in my hair. Glitter's like crazy annoying. I remember when I was growing up, there were all these girls that used to like, you know, like, throw glitter in their hair and then you'd hang out with them or whatever. And then you'd like have gl- fun glitter on you for like days later. Yeah, all over your clothes. All right. Awesome. Sauce. <laughs> Big J. I appreciate that made me sound really dirty, but like how often do you wash your coat? Let's be honest. How often do you wash a coat? Not that often. I, I wash my coat. Okay. Not um, everyone is as dirty as, you know. I never Britain. wash my coat. I just buy a coat and I have it for like two years and then I buy a new one. So that I don't have to wash it. Is it be- is because you keep getting bigger? <laughs> it's, all <the> crap. <laughs> it's all the crap you eat. Jesus Christ. I barely ever talk to you about food I eat. But just because and when, when I you do, do it's, like, it's always pizza. It's always like you just candies that you're on a diet. and old stuff on the floor and you just wanted to taste it gum and all <laughs> like all that stuff you have never said oh i'm i'm just eating a salad i'm sure i've eaten sa- i'm sure i've said that i told you that I've eaten no I never always bad food oh i just ordered like some chicken wings and it's like proper good with some with oh the last last night was like uh what pizza and cookies and the yes cookies it, was. Some- <laughs> it was yeah yeah <laughs> I actually, I got this pizza thing, okay? Last night was, like, a proper fatty moment, right? Because I got a pizza bit was on special to come with, like, loads of sides. And it had, like, six different sides. I didn't eat it all. I shared it out. But, like, it was amazing. Like, all these boxes came. And I was like, oh, look, we got cookies. We got dough balls. We got chicken wings. We got wedges. There was something else that came with cut. It was amazing. It was great. So, was oh, so, so you bought food for everyone, huh? 
<laughs> I, yeah. can, I could just imagine you get all these boxes and it's like you're just left with one slice in the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. I got full. I had like half the. Because it was like technically my meal. I had the pizza. Um, but I only ate like half of it and I was so full up by the end. I was like, oh, I've got all these cool sides that I could try, but like no room. Anyway, 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 anyway. <laughs> let's go to the topics. Wow. Look look at that sidetrack. Uh huh. Okay. Um, We need to pay deep respect to this, okay? Absolutely. This is another serious question. You're being serious this time. I absolutely am. I don't know why you think I'm being sarcastic all the time. <laughs> I wonder why. Awesome Source Big J. Wow. Wow. Okay. Says. <laughs> uh, so this is more of an ethics question than a Guild Wars Two question. See, I'm not being I'm not being sarcastic. We're talking about ethics here, okay? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about killing the dragons if you knew the cycle of getting cleansed of the magic while destroying all life on the? And okay, I'm gonna read this again. Pay attention to what I'm saying because I'm gonna explain the situation here because you're not so into the story and we will we will have a discussion, okay? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about killing the dragons? If you knew that killing the dragons... Hold on, no, I can't reword what you're saying. How do you feel about killing the dragons if you knew the cycle of getting cleansed of the magic while destroying all life on the planet and then the human gods have to come back and refill it was a requirement that the world has to go through or else it just dies slowly but surly? Wow. Uh, I'll throw that over to you. Just sort of fill up 10 minutes of the podcast with your discussion on uh, that answer. Is that all right? Um, yeah, yeah, okay, so, alright, so, so basically, so basically, it's just like the Assassin's Creed storyline, where the world has to go through a cycle, and every time you kill the Elder Dragon, it's only for a little bit of time, because the Elder Dragons will grow back, like, from the ground, because, uh, the guys will plant a seed. Like for, turnips. For, 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 yeah, for Zaitan, and, um, so Zaitan is the smallest, right, it's just a small little seed, itty bitty seed, right, and he's very dumb, so... You know, he's off to the corner. He's like the outcast. That's why he was so easy to uh, to beat. So, yeah. Um, so, what's the real answer, uh, Winning Potatoes? Explain the story to me. All well, right, listen. Cycle? So, yeah, okay. So, uh, he's worded it really poorly, okay? So, here, here's, here's the common theory about why the Elder Dragons even exist. Have you ever wondered that? Why are they even there? No. Yeah, I did, well, actually. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um, basically, deep underground on Tyria, on the planet, the magics that we use to cast abilities and stuff, right? Um, that that flows like... Uh, I, I don't know whether they mean it metaphorically or what, but it flows through ley lines deep underneath the surface of the planet. Okay? So, you still with me? Like Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, okay. Sort of, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like quite a common trope. So, it flows through these, these places, and actually, it's constantly building up and up and up, and the average amount of ambient magic on this world is getting higher and higher and higher, okay? Which means that we have more power and control over magic and can do bigger things with magic than we could like a thousand years ago, for example, right? So then the Elder Dragons wake up and all the Elder Dragons do is consume magic and they are removing this excess magic from the ley lines, dying it right back down and then when the magic from the ley lines is gone, they go to sleep again. And by doing this, they destroy much of the life on Tyria and, and it, it's chaos, okay? So you're with me. That's sort of the idea. Um, now, this person is theorizing that once that happens and the Elder Dragons fall asleep, the gods, the human gods come along from elsewhere and, you know, kickstart the, the magic in the ley lines again and bring life back to the planet and bring magic back to the planet. And then they leave and then the Elder Dragons wake up and consume it. And then they go to sleep, and then the gods come back. And it's this cycle, yeah? So you're with me on the idea of the cycle. Yeah. So he's asking, the question is, if this is the cycle that is in place to ensure that Tyria can exist, is it bad that we kill the Elder Dragons? Because if the Elder Dragons aren't there to consume all the excess magic, what happens? What if that kills the planet? What if that causes even more chaos and everything explodes? That That's will the be question. The the end of um, the last living story. So, yeah, so he's saying, what do you think of that? Do you think we shouldn't kill the Elder Dragons now? Or no, I think we should still kill them and, re you know, <laughs> and definitely see what happens. And destroy uh, the planet in the process? or see Absolutely, absolutely. Because I want, that would be interesting. I want to see what happens. I want to see what they do. Do we go to another planet? Do we find some way to keep the planet stable? Do we find some way to use all the energy? And create stuff with it. 
and invent stuff. I don't know, dude. Like, let's, let's, yeah, no, they're, they're all, that's all good ideas. Yeah, I, I want I want to see interesting stuff. I'm, nah, cycles are boring. Cycles are, are predictable. Let's have something unpredictable. So one of the uh, ancient races of this world, the Masat, the last time the Elder Dragons were awake, to escape the chaos and to escape the cycle, the Masat are kind of a special race because they found a way to slip away from Tyria and this dimension altogether and went to a different world, a different reality. So when people say, oh, the Masat are kind of interesting, like a potential story direction that Arena Net could eventually go in is we kill the Elder Dragons, find out that that was a bad move, that we're going to destroy Tyria, and then they bring the Masat back and we, we like team up with the Masat or fight against the Masat to do what the Masat did once before. And then in that way, we go back to like other areas of Lords. You see what I mean? And we do go to another planet or we do not do another thing. Like those are the big end game things for the story of this game and this world and uh yeah i think it's a good topic because it like like now you kind of understand that right you sort of know more about the end game story of the of the game yeah it's, yeah that would be pretty cool i would like to see some some like major changes and stuff like that so this like light light uh living story content you know it's like nothing really crazy is going on at the moment you know, there's no epic storyline. I think that's why people kind of want personal stories to continue because they want to, they want it to feel like, oh, the next, you know, personal story is out. You know, I can continue my personal story to the next part and the next part and the next part. Like, oh, the epic, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, okay, when you play those open world games and then you have the main storyline and then you have the side quests, it mm -hmm. feels like we're playing side quests all the time. Mm -hmm. And Arena is constantly trying to make the side quest the main story. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to try to intertwine, which usually is good in a single player game, but probably not so good here. Uh, well, it depends on how they do it. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, like it's an interesting question. And to the, the just the concept of we have to fight these things, we have to kill the Elder Dragons, otherwise they're going to kill us. And then it's like, oh, it's a lose-lose situation, but we kill them and we doom ourselves in some other way is a cool, cool idea. And, you know, hopefully they could write some really interesting stuff into that. So, yeah, good idea. Um, the next question is... Uh, well, not really a question. Oh, no, it is a question. Right, this is an even bigger question than the previous one. Right? Oh, boy. Again, pay great respect to this. My Reis says, MV and WP, cupcakes or muffins? Wow. Oh, my gosh. We could talk another hour. You, sh you sure you want to answer this question? No, they're both fatty foods. I don't eat fatty foods. Really? Really? <laughs> We're yeah. just talking about chocolates and pizzas <laughs> and cookies <laughs> and the stuff that you eat off the floor. In, in your room like come on cookies is what we were talking about not cupcakes and muffins wow they're totally different they're totally different oh my goodness well they are different but they're still sweets um cupcakes or muffins i'm gonna i'm gonna say muffins because they're bigger and i just i don't know i, I i've had so many good ex good muffins in my life even though cupcakes are great but they, they, Muffin seems to have, like, I don't know. It, I, it, I've had some really good uh, banana nut muffins and some good blueberry muffins. To blueberry, say. boom, there it is. Yeah. You shoot your scores. Those are just so good. You just bite into them and you just, oh, it's so good. But you could kind of get the same. They're kind of the same thing, just a smaller muffin, right? But I don't know. The way they do cupcakes is so different nowadays, and it's usually just the icing. And I'm not much of an icing guy, yeah, except I for agree. his uh, um, cheese cheesecake ice cream. I, cheese, is it cheesecake? No, it's not cheesecake. It's cheesecake doesn't have icing. Cheese on it. cream cheese. Cream cheese icing is like like the only icing I am good for. Um, there's some other icings out there, but like general, just icing that you usually see on cupcakes, I'm just not interested in. But, yeah, um, yeah, I. I uh, cupcakes, I don't know. I, I'm sure there are great cupcakes out there, but my sort of general supermarket cupcake experience isn't that great. Right. Like, I don't know. They, they're kind of all very processed kind of. I don't know. Like, cupcakes just... Like, and there are some nice ones. I like that, like those butterfly cupcakes you can do where you can, like... Um, you get like a cupcake and then like you you cut the top off and you like have it with strawberry and a little bit of cream on there and then you like 
like fold it so it looks like there's a butterfly on the top. I don't know whether you have those really in the states or not. Yeah, yeah. You go to a bakery and there's like tons of good cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. Like I used to work in a bakery and like we used to make those and that was pretty cool. Really? Um, yeah. Um, but muffins, man. Muffins. Oh, we're, are just... we're just gonna slide by this topic. Okay, go ahead. Uh huh. Oh, there's not much to say. It was a supermarket bakery too, but muffins? <laughs> oh man. Uh, like especially blueberry muffins. Sometimes you get like Ooh. those muffins with like um. Like, uh, they're not glazed, but they've got, like, you know, a little bit of, like, crystally sugar, like, on the top. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, and it gives it that bit of crunch at the top. Oh, and blueberry muffins oh. are the best. Muffins mm. are great with, like, a hot drink as well. Like, a muffin and a cup of tea. Oh, it's a good combo. Oh, it's hard gosh. to touch a combo like that. And you're right, muffins can be muffins all the way, I think. I, are you, like, ordering muffins from Amazon right now? Dude, you could probably do that. You could probably get muffins. <laughs> he was just talking about ordering all this stuff from Amazon. Muffins. I, oh, gosh. So, muffins, right? Muffins. Muffins you- at Amazon.co.uk. Absolutely. Muffins, fast and fantastic. There's a whole bunch. They actually don't look that good. The Hummingbird Bakery Cupcakes and Muffins. What do you think of brownies, by the way? They've got brownies for sale here. Brownie, like brown- brownies? Yeah, brownies are good. I... I haven't I don't like a lot of them. Dude, like, my friend... All right, so an old girlfriend. An old girlfriend used to make these seven-layer cookie brownies. They were, okay. <laughs> like... <laughs> what? Yeah, like, it, it was, it was like, basically, like, um, oh, man, it was, like, uh, caramel, chocolate, then uh, this other layer of, I don't know, like, a, a British layer, and... It, it's just all this stuff, and it's very thin. And when you bite into it, it's like, boom! Like, just explode in your mouth, dude. It's ridiculous. It's called, I think it's called Seven Layer Cookies, but it's like a brownie. But, yeah. That's really weird. I, I don't know. Uh, brownies are okay. I've never really liked them that much. I find them a bit heavy and a bit tasteless. It's probably, again, though, just, like, the type I have. Yeah, you're, you're having some bad brownies, dude. I'm having some bad brownies. Yeah. That's a serious issue. I, I can make you some... Uh, some nice brownies over here. <clears throat> okay, can that be my Christmas present? Absolutely. I'm going to send you some fruitcake. Forget it's brownies. like I say, I don't know what happened to your present. I was, uh... Wait, did you say fruitcake? <laughs> I like fruitcake. Do you? People are like, oh, don't put raisins in stuff. Raisins are good in cake. I like I like raisin cake. If, if it's done well, I don't mind a couple of raisins in my cake. That if could be like a well. euphemism. That could be a euphemism, euphemism for all kinds of things. <laughs> really? If yeah. it's done right... No, I like a couple of raisins in my cake. <laughs> I will leave it up to people's imagination. Let's go on to the next question. <gasps> oh. Xylent Knights, uh, whose name is really similar to an old person I used to know in Guild Wars 1, funnily enough, says, uh, do you think we will ever get to see the Temple of the Aegis? Also, what about an access to Underworld and Fissure of Woe? Would you rather have ArenaNet release the next dragon or these elite areas? So, wh- what do you... I know you don't know much, but what do you know about the Temple of the Aegis, Underworld, I, Fissure of Woe? I, mem- I remember doing a little bit of Underworld for uh, some of my achievements back in Guild Wars 1 days. Um, it was like this... Like, uh, like a challenge mode, pretty much. I guess you can call it. I, I, well, you know, challenge missions are different i think but uh it's where you could go across the map and you have to complete these objectives and the party kind of splits up mm-hmm. and stuff and you get these obsidian shards which you can use to craft the best armor in the game mm-hmm. and, and ectos and ectos and stuff like that and it's so like basically end game content i guess you can call it yes absolutely guild wars one was seriously lacking end game content seriously people might not know but actually when the game first launched not even underworld and fissure of woe existed there were like no quests in some of the last areas of the game it was really 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 lacking in end game content but this was end game content that was added at the start almost at the start of this game's lifespan and remained a staple of the end game for the entirety of that game's lifetime no, the entire time. The same zone, mainly Underworld, Fissure of Woe 2, um, had rewards good enough that people were always happy to continue going back there. Um, you had to pay money to go in, and that amount of money became really insignificant as the game got older and inflation made you know it more trivial. But in early days, like you had to spend a lot of money to go in. So like a lot of the time with Guild Wars 2, they time gate stuff. They say, right, you can only do one, you can only be rewarded for a guild mission once a week, right? Stuff like that. 
you can only get one laurel a day from your dailies. In Guild Wars 1, the way that they like forced people to take it a little bit slower was they forced you to spend a lot of money. In the early days, a lot of money. And if you died in there, you were instantly booted and your money was worth nothing. Um, but it was really, really strong content. It was eight man, large uh, map that you could go in. The map had something like 10 different quests you could complete. And later on, after they updated it, um, by completing all 10 at once, you could get like a really big chest with nice stuff. Enemies in these areas had a chance to drop really rare crafting materials. And those crafting materials could be used to craft really powerful, well, it was no more powerful than anything else, but really good looking or prestigious armor in the Fissure of Woe, which was one of these two zones. And that was how Endgame worked in Guild Wars 1. You just had like these um, double large areas with, that, yeah, like you say, encouraged a lot of splitting. And they were cruel, cruel maps. Like, um, do you remember anything about any of the quests in them? Um, No, no. All right, here's an example of one of the quests and how cruel it was, right? Underworld had like three ridiculously difficult quests. One of them was called the Four Horsemen, where you would um, you'd speak to an NPC and he'd be like, "Okay, you just need to defend me now." And then instantly, as soon as you speak to this NPC, just these hordes and hordes of enemies would flank you from the left and from wow. the right, and you'd have to defend this boss, this character in the middle, and they would absolutely wreck you. And you had all you had all these weird strategies where people would have to get in line. And there was another one that was really trollish, not quite as hard as Four Horsemen. I, I don't feel but like you'd be in this place called like the bone pits I think it was right and imagine imagine it's a long corridor it didn't look like this but mechanically it's like this okay imagine it's a long corridor and halfway through the corridor um you see like a little bit of a courtyardy area right and then you go all the way to the end of the corridor and you speak to an NPC okay and when you, the second you speak to that NPC a ton of allies spawn miles back in the courtyard and then immediately get attacked by tons of aggressors. And your whole team is over at this NPC. So then wow. you, like it would complete. And then at the second one of those allies dies, you get kicked from the underworld. Like you got kicked. So well, you have all these. So if any one person dies, you get kicked. Yeah. Like it was cruel, Whoa. dude. It was hardcore content. One person. Wow. Oh, no. Okay. One of these NPCs that can't be rezzed. Players oh, in the party oh, can die oh. and be rezzed. But the NPCs are way squishier than players, so it is as bad as you're imagining it. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, yeah. That's still. That's still and they spawn miles away from you, so you had to know this stuff in advance and have like your whole team ready and prepared so that you speak to the NP the, the quest giver. It was hard stuff. Uh, and the question here then, Matt, is what do you think about. It's like adding Queensdale. Think, not quite as big, but think about like adding Queensdale. But you have to pay to access it. If you die, you get kicked out. And it's got crazy good rewards there. It's like end, end game content. What do you think about that? Instead of what was the other choice? And it's like an instance. What was um, the other choice? Okay, would you rather have Arena Net? Oh, yeah, it's more than that. Would you rather have Arena Net release the next dragon or elite areas like those? Elite those areas. Exactly? Elite areas, without a doubt. Would you like to see the Underworld and Fissure of Way specifically come back? Um, in Guild Wars 2 forms or totally new stuff? I, I think it doesn't matter to me. I, I, I would say new stuff. Why not, why not see whatever goofy ideas that they have to do? And I, I want it hardcore exactly how the, the, that was the, the one that... Um, well, which one you were talking You were talking about Fissure of Woe? It's or the same for both. Underworld oh, ended up both. harder. And Underworld ended up a little bit harder because in the end they added like this super new hard boss called Doom. That was like one of the hardest bosses that this franchise has ever known. That you'd have to kill right at the end of everything. You'd have to do all ten quests and then kill him, and it was wow. ridiculously hard. I've I, got I've got a video series of me doing that stuff and dying at horrible, horrible, horrible moments, and it's just horrible. I think I'm just a little oversalted because you know the elder dragons are usually just like ah oh, you know press one, press two, spam or whatever. We can't say usually. It's only been once. So yeah, 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 exactly. So that's why you can say usually. If they want to prove more, then they should put more in there. But of course, they can't just introduce something and just kill it off so quickly. Uh, hopefully, if they introduce it in the living story, you know, you, it can't be killed. You can just keep attacking and attacking. And I'm assuming it will be just like a dungeon, maybe? Like dragon dungeons considered? Um... I wonder. So, like, I, I wonder how they're gonna have mode, that but... for Zaitan, though. So it would be. So would it be a story mode? I wouldn't want a story mode. I would actually have it in the gameplay, either open world or a special dungeon, just to kill the Zaitan, or I mean, not Zaitan, kill the Elder Dragon. Don't you think? Yeah, I think that could be interesting. Like I... you know, first thing that comes to mind is raids, right? 
having a little bit more than five people go in there to kill the dragon. That would kind of make sense, but or make it open world. Either way, you kind of want this long... epic event, but the the lag would be just nuts. So I, I'm so scared to say open world nowadays. Here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um. Imagine if Zaitan was. Imagine if Ara was a part of the open world. Imagine that you couldn't access the Malkor's Leap unless you'd done Straits, and you couldn't access Curse unless you'd done Malkor's Leap. And then imagine that it's one long dynamic event change, starting from um in Straits of Devastation, Fort Trinity, and you push through. It's all open world. It's all one long chain, you know, optional objectives. And then eventually you get to Zaitan, and then right at the end, you've got a little instance that people go in and prove that they're good fighters five in a five-man environment rather than just Zergs. I and thought that, that's what it was. I thought that's what it was. That's, I, yeah, I, I think that's what they were trying to do, but it but its implementation screwed it because it was so, you know, you don't actually have to have done all the dynamic event chains. You can just skip straight to the entrance at Curse Shore. And um, it was really easy story mode. And it was just pressing one in the fight in the end, you know? Yeah. And but I think, in, I think in concept, I like that idea. I like the blend of open world zerging and uh, dynamic event chains. Yeah, it's the same combined. thing as the temples. People like, like that. It's like, okay, in order to push the... the... Yeah, you remember before when everyone was getting their legendaries for the first time and everyone needed the uh, uh, obi shards? Mm -hmm. So people had to push the tower and wait for everyone to get there. Like, oh, let's put Spalfazar. And everyone will get together and just like, okay, we got to do this. And we have to protect the NPCs. We push it and we defeat Balfazar and get our OP shots to get our legendary and some people would just be waiting just for that and be like uh guessing on other servers just to defeat balthazar that was great see if they I kept agree. if they kept putting stuff into the game that that had that mechanic you know making people you know log in like oh i gotta push balthazar with a couple guys you know all that's open world it'll increase community and, and and interaction and communication between everyone and you know more stuff like Tequado and stuff like that so yeah you know i think more of that would be great definitely um but yeah i i definitely think i definitely think i would like the elite stuff more that's something totally different a boss fight like an elder dragon not to say it's been done before i'm pretty because i'm pretty sure they're gonna do it differently than you know because this is before before they released the game they don't know how the community their community is right now they couldn't have anticipated how we re re would react to the end of our raw dungeon and everything like that now they know exactly well not exactly where they have a whole like hundreds of opinions being shouted at them do this do this do this and they have to kind of like you know okay have meetings like okay what are we going to do guys what are we going to do if we do the yeah. wrong thing <laughs> they're going to hate us forever you know so i think i think uh elites because i would like to see some new stuff Something yeah totally absolutely different. absolutely and you know coming from last podcast where i say that my number one moment of 2013 was the addition of the Tequatl fight yeah, I think uh, more elite areas is probably up my alley too as well. I'm not that compelled by the Elder Dragons. I don't think they're great villains in the first place. So, yeah. Renegade. We, we already picked... Uh, oh, no. Sorry. I, I'm actually on the wrong question here. My my bad. My bad. We apparently picked one of them twice, which is pretty amazing. So, uh, we're actually going to go over to... Some, some of you guys tweeted, Matt, uh, different things that we can be talking about. Um, so, we're just going to uh, pick... I believe we've got at least one from there, so... And that tweet comes from, as soon as I find it, Oh, good job, uh, Tyler Canada. Hey, look, I've got a lot of stuff I'm looking through here in all kinds of places. Tyler Canada, who says, <laughs> I want Matt Visual and WP uh, to chat about our current farming technique so that it can help him buy Zap. Wow, how selfish. Okay, yeah, so, um, <laughs> um, okay, well... I don't really farm as much as I used to. Like, everyone remembers me. Uh, I used to be on, uh, before I moved to Tarnish Coast, I used to be on Tarnish Coast a lot. Like, just farming Frost Gorge. Constantly, 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 constantly. Every single day for, like, I don't know, like, a lot. A couple, few weeks, maybe? A few weeks? I got tons of gold and bought a bunch of stuff from it, uh, from my oats. But what... Um, what I do is Frost Gorge. When I that was the most recent one. What I used to do back in the days, if you want a trip to the past, is uh, Karma farming in Ori. You remember that? Remember that? Um, the Plinks chain. The Plinks chain, man. Interesting. And remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you never used to do that. I oh, did yeah. it a, a little bit. Yeah. You you weren't really into 
legendaries until later on, and then you just bought it. Like, you didn't even do anything. He's like, oh, let me just sell my Halloween skins because I saved them, and boom, legendaries. You didn't even work for it. I, Lazy. I worked. What, what are you talking about? I did work for you it. You didn't work for it. Like, I, I remember when I first talked to you, I was like, oh, so you getting your legendary? Ah, uh, it's whatever, man. Like, you, you, you just had materials. Like, it just floated to you. And yeah, you just I well, it. It, it, it was. I, I made you, the effort buy to buy the skins early, though. Like, yeah. and I regret it now. I wish I still had a ghastly grinning shield on me. I really do. What I used to do was I did a little bit of plinks, but um, I used to farm the Grenth chain. Uh, Grenth it got nerfed when they like fixed everything in ore, but Grenth used to be fantastic because you could. Uh, do you do you know how the Grenth fight works at the Grenth Temple? Um, this is the one in uh, Kershaw. Yes, in Kershaw, the very uh, south of Kershaw. Bottom left, yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. If you yeah. fail it, you have to restart it all over again. Yeah, so you've got an NPC there that if he dies, it just pushes back to either some place just outside the temple or even further back, depending on another event to do with a laser. Right. Um, but the way you would farm that is, uh, you, you could only do it with like three or four people, and you would have to hope that no one else came. So it was one of those weird things where you didn't want to push an event. It was like Fire Ember farming. But the, what the boss does there is he summons all these giant ice spikes, or he might not do this anymore. I haven't really been there for a while. But he summons these giant ice spikes that slam down and will one-shot you if they hit you. But also when they land, they summon these tiny little ice elementals that die in like two hits right but the ice elementals all dropped loot so what you do is you'd run around with someone in the grenth fight kiting the actual boss himself and making sure that your npc doesn't die because he doesn't aggro on them and you just keep farming these little ice elementals that would spawn. And you could do all this crazy stuff to, like, make sure that the boss stayed at high health. Um, and, like, if you were on a thief, you could use short by one to just bounce through them all. Mm. But you'd get, like, crazy epic loot. And um, you just get massive, massive amounts of ba loot bags. And the, the best thing, though, was those ice elementals dropped corrupted lodestones because they were ice elementals. And even though they died in a couple of hits, it didn't matter. So you could, like, do it for an hour and get, like, two corrupted lodestones, which was worth, like like two gold each uh, at the time and two that that was a lot of money back then like a precursor yeah. was like a hundred gold somewhere around there maybe 200 gold so to be able to get so much gold through the lodestones was really really important and that's what i did like i could earn 10 to 20 gold a day uh, just doing that I, and that was a lot of money that was it was a lot of grind but i was doing that an awful lot and i made really good friends with a guy there who's now one of the highest achievement point people that i've got on my follower lists because um, he's still playing it quite a lot, but he didn't like go to PvP or whatever. So, yeah, like that's what I did for my Incinerator. But also just playing the game for a, you know seven months straight full time, you you end up having the money without you know really wanting it. Yeah, definitely. Just playing the game really gives you the money. Um, nowadays, do you farm or we're mostly in Worldly World and leveling? That's uh, what's mostly PvP. what I'm doing. Yeah, so. Well, I, yeah, I, I got a ton of money from PvP, from my glory, from the giant gift, so I'm set for money at the moment. I've got to be honest, I'm going to be perfectly honest, a lot of the time if I want money now, I buy gems for it. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to sink, you know, a tenner into the game or whatever, because that gets you so, me so much gold. Like, you can spend £10 and get, like, 50 gold out of it or something. So, like, if I desperately want something, because I've got no big goals, if I'm like, oh, I really want this armor or something, I'll just be like, right, I'll just drop that in there. Because you can usually buy some actual other item in the gem store at the same time. And that's what I do um, if I really want the money. But I don't anymore anyway because of PvP. But, yeah, that's what I've done how, for the past much, three months. How much gold did you get from, from doing switching it to gold? From uh, from the glory chest, yeah. I've got four hundred gold on my account right now. I think just, about two... just from that, just from no, 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 no. I think about maybe two hundred and fifty of it has okay. come from glory. But the thing is, because I'm PvPing actively again, I've I spent all of my glory. I'm on. I'm coming up on fifty k glory again now. So that's a bunch wow. more gifts. A hundred k glory is about fifty gold. So like, okay, so it's not as much as I thought. All no, right. sorry, a hundred k glory is about a hundred gold. Or more. It's maybe close to 250 gold. Okay, as far as that's, like. okay that's not that bad. I oh Man, I thought it was like millions. Okay. Whew. Yeah, so I, I had 400,000 glory when the update went live. Transform it all into... If I transformed all of that into presents, I would have had 400 gold straight up. But instead, I spent some on PvP rewards. So in total, really, I only got about 250 gold. And that doesn't include just the raw gold you get from winning matches. It's, it's good. I'm not saying PvP yeah. is a place to go farm gold, but it's yeah. good. And that's where yeah, I'm just getting my money. Yeah, they're adding, they're adding nice little bits everywhere, so everything's good. All right, so Absolutely. is that it? 
There's uh, there's actually one more. I don't know whether it's uh, a big question or not. But the final one is, again, from Twitter. It's Paul B. Who says, I want to know if you guys think ArenaNet can go back to two-week living story updates so that many people don't want after a six-week break. What's with these crazy... Okay, I think what this person <laughs> is saying is... We're having a break from the living story at the moment, and he's saying when we stop that break, do you think ArenaNet can go back to two weeks, or they're going to have bigger breaks going forward? Oh, of course they're going to go back to two weeks. The, yeah. the, the four, the four uh, story arcs are going to be every two weeks, and it's just going to continue on from that. And then they're going to have a break again for the, I guess, the finale. They're going to keep doing that every time they're going to do a finale for the last part of the, the story That would arc. make sense. Yeah, they're going to keep going for a break. I think this is going to follow that same schedule of uh, doing a lot of living story and then break. Living story and then break finale. Living story and then break finale. I think they're going to just keep doing that. And um, it should work. It should work. So every year you're going to get that big story that you want. Well, hopefully it will be like incredibly awesome and what we always hope for in life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. That think? is all we hope for in life. No, I, th- I think that I think that's true. I think they spent so long restructuring their company so that they could do the two weekly thing. It'd be kind of madness to stop it now, just because there's a few rare people in the community that don't have, you know, that don't like that there's so much content going in the game. <laughs> if they if they ever address that it's you know replayable, you know it's all temporary at the moment. If they if they address that, which they have a lot. If you think about the Tower of Nightmares, like so much of that stuff was doable for like well over a month. Um, you know, as long as that's addressed, then who's going to complain that we get more content? No one. Yeah. Um, I do I do agree that it's, it's kind of smart to, you know, leave it longer so they can work more on each release and, you know, have more impact with each. But also, if they do that and then it's still not up to the quality, people are just going to still feel upset with the finished product. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm happy with two-week. Two-week is great for me because I've always got stuff to be talking about, to be looking forward to, and I like the piecemeal updates because not many games really have the balls to do that kind of thing. None do. Like, every two weeks is so rapid, and I think that's what makes Guild Wars 2 distinct at the moment. We may see more breaks between arcs, as Matt just said, but otherwise, no. Yeah. I... <laughs> That was the last question. I guess I guess since we, we, we have so much time and people like more than an hour, why not do some gaming new well, what you've been playing this week other than Guild Wars 2? You've oh, been playing all Guild Wars 2. Don't you've ask me playing, that. You've been playing all Guild Wars 2, haven't you? Dude, I've been playing Guild Wars 2, I've been playing Starbound with you, and I've been playing Tesla Grad. What else have I been playing? Nothing really. I'm not g- great at general gaming. I I feel like I've been playing Hearthstone because I'm so into Hearthstone and watching so much Hearthstone, and it's one of those games like I absolutely feel like a pro at that without ever having picked up the client. But uh, otherwise, like really, <laughs> I've just been PvPing. Um, mostly I have been uh, testing out a few things in Guild Wars Two. Well, other than Guild Wars Two, we we're playing some Tesla Grand. I was playing some Tesla Grand. And no, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Tesla what? Grad. There's no N. I, why do I keep saying that? I don't know. You did it. Yeah, <laughs> Dang it. Tesla Grad. Tesla Grad. 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 Uh, it's like an indie 2D pl- uh, puzzle platformer that's like, uh, it's going to be all like on the Wii U and PS4. And it, it's indie, but like, it looks like it's produced by like a, a company i guess you can say well, it's a relatively small game but it, it's a the art style the music it just gives off that nice feeling kind of like braid i guess if you look at it like the hand-drawn yeah art, yeah, yeah yeah with some nice music puzzles it was, the, it was the soundtrack that got to me most about that game really 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 cool game you guys should check it out it's pretty cheap like full price is ten dollars but i think it's on sale as yeah, absolutely worth it. I mean, how far we haven't seen the end, right? But what do you think about that boss battle? Uh, pretty good, I guess. I mean, oh, oh, you didn't like it? Well, no, no. no. I mean, the bird one was kind of cool. Yeah, um, that's what I meant. The first one. one I think looked visually better, though. I loved like the kind of clunkyish movement on him. Well, you I know? guess you're watching it. You're not really playing it, so and you're just watching me. Just pretty yeah, much I can't solve even say that all I've been the puzzles. Yeah, you haven't you haven't played it. You watched me play. I don't even know the controls. <laughs> what <are> you, <laughs> oh gosh. Um, well, I'm gonna be picking up uh, Link to the Past. No, not Link to the Past. Uh, a Link Between Worlds and Fire Emblem. 
Is a link? Isn't a link between worlds like? It's related to a link to the past or something. It's, it's yeah. Like- it's it's like a spiritual successor. Okay, right. Man, uh, you you play you you play, you play a lot of that 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 uh that Gilders too, huh? This yeah, week? man. Yeah. What's, what's going on? What's it's going on? It's all about PvP. You, you, I'm trying to get like a team together on the PvP side of things. And but you you are you're definitely going to um have me on your team, right? Because that's just the way it is, right? You get so insulted that I don't PvP with you, but like you, I he, could play PvP with you. But he's there's like, lying. There's a lot to he's learn. lying. Don't don't let him twist twist everything to make it seem like oh I don't want to play PvP. No, don't, 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 don't listen to this guy. Don't listen. you don't invite me to play PvP. You're supposed yeah, to I teach just don't me. Consider it. What is it? What is it called? Teach me PvP. I have been thinking, dude. I have been thinking it, maybe we should bring it, that know, series back. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear that crap. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear no, it. I, I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm being genuinely serious with you right now. Do you want to bring that series back? Yes. I, I, yeah? I, well, the reason why I'm leveling up a new character is kind of why I, I want to get into another character so I can play PvP and enjoy it a lot more because I feel like I'm not really enjoying playing my Guardian in these situations where I have, especially if I have to bunk, I, I feel like it's not interesting enough. I think at high level... Bunking on your guard could still also be very interesting because you'd be supporting team in very different ways to I think you're accustomed to in PVE. You would be supporting teams in a way that has nothing to do with boons or healing, um, but through your positioning and through the CCs that you land on opponents. So I think there could be fun stuff for you to see. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I do want to bring that series back, especially because I saw Arena Net posted on their uh, the official forums in the PVP section like an area for people to go who are new to pvp and they like listed a bunch of prominent streamers and videos and things and guides about pvp and uh we were linked on that as well so like that kind of makes me think we really should get back to that series and and show off some of the other cool stuff and because i'm so deeply in pvp right now i've got a lot to say and uh show you and hopefully get you enthused about it so yeah did we just decide to do this a new series um no we're not promising anything it's it's because if we do and then of course when a potato society doesn't want to do it anymore it wouldn't be i don't you made. you've actually twisted this like it was me that said no well like we mutually agreed not to do it anymore um, what, what, no no i think it just kind of fell yeah right. it was it was like, no don't, one's don't fault this on me it's not like i was annoyed no, like, no oh, all right let, let, let me not make them think that yeah it, it was just <laughs> it just kind of fell like we just we're playing other stuff in Guild Wars 2. And yeah, like literally I go through phases where and I'll stop playing PvP and all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not playing it at the moment anyway. So what's going on? But I'm so heavily in it at the moment. Maybe, maybe it'll be in the horizon. We should I'm, I'm going to go heavy like into World of the World and just play all World of the World for like months. No, not months, but like hours and hours a day and level up and rank up and try to get to learn just whatever class I pick. It's either, and... either going to be Thief or Engineer. Or both at the same time, which is probably most likely. Um, I, if yeah. I were you, I would go Engineer. Because Engineer has great uh, fighting capabilities in small roaming. And it has big impact in Zerg fights. Thieves really have very little to contribute when there's a large Zerg battle going on. And the kind of thief that I know you want to be, where you've just got... You, you just don't die, like you're stealth constantly, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, it's not those helpful. Thi- the, the, those specs are actually really bad to play because no, they're, actually, they're nerfed already i know they're nerfed already. well not even yeah okay sure they're nerfed but the main thing is like a, a spec like that when they just invest so heavily in stealths and get an initiative so they can keep doing it and stuff really they can't fight barely anyone the only way that they can win a fight is if someone you know specifically has to like 1v1 them or whatever you see a lot of bored thieves in world versus the world that are like please 1v1 me stay in this area like, so that <laughs> it conforms to their rules because otherwise they can't do anything and they're bored it it's sucks. a cheapest spec. Yeah, it, it's more NG. That's why I'm leveling an NG right now instead of my uh, my thief. Because <laughs> and and you you said you said pistol and shield is pretty much the best thing. No, but, no, no, no. For my condi for a condi spec, pistol shield is great. But but power is rifle so what's is great the, on a power spec. So what is the difference? Like what 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 are, what is the difference between like what should I want to go for? Like depending on my uh, play I style. Think a, 
It's I think as leveling, my experience as I was leveling was I didn't play around with builds that much, but I went on nades. I got my 30 in explosives as soon as possible so I could have really long range nades because just the. F it's so fun to be at 1500 range, like putting out such massive pressure. Like, it was unlike anything I'd ever played in Guild Wars 2 before. It was so, so fun. So that just had me going for a long time. And nades are great both on power and condi, but they sort of shine if you go condi and power together. So, like, for, for you, I, I would say. Do your leveling up on Condi and just run nades. Um, I think that would be really strong. And power specs on NG are fun, but they're also really, really, really um, glassy. They can get targeted out quite quickly. And overall, I think they're weaker. They can spike higher, but weakness can destroy them. Blinds can destroy them. Blocks can destroy them. Just missing your burst can destroy them. Condi is awesome because... It's easier, basically. Condi, you can, like, hit people with stray grenades and stuff. And the Condis continue to tick away and do damage even if you're missing from there on out. And you've got heavy pressure on you from there on out. That's why I like Condi so much. Um, so, yeah, I would go Condi, NG on Nade Kit, Pistol Shield. You could go Pistol Pistol, but the Pistol Wolf hand is kind of lame compared to the Shield. Oh, oh I've pistol. never seen Pistol Pistol. I have never seen Pistol Pistol. The, the, the Pistol Offhand <laughs> fires out, like, a glue gun that immobiliz immobilizes people for, like, half a second. And it's got a point blank uh, thing that applies burning to people. It's just not that good compared to all of the utility shield gets you. But I know one of the top engineer PVPers runs Pistol Pistol for some reason. And I would love to hear why. I might ask him someday. But for Wild vs. Wild, I like shield because um, it's just got so much, so much utility. Blast finishes, projectile reflection, stunning people, a boomerang attack, blocking stuff. All on two skills. It's, it's brilliant. Ah, NG, 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 NG. Yeah, NG. so, like, how far did you say you've got on your NG? Not that far, not that far. I haven't had time. I haven't had time. So I'm only, like, 20-something right now. I so am seeing I, you online now. I'm, like, looking at my friends list to see people. I'm to always add invisible. People. Like, people, people, they're like, oh, you're not like... I'm invisible, guys, because, because when I'm on... Because he hates you. No, no, <laughs> no. It's because people get upset when I don't answer them. And if I'm doing something, if I'm on Mumble, and I'm talking, 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 I'm not looking at the chat. I'm, yeah. I'm a talkative person. I do not look at the chat. All right. If you see me answer you, which is most likely mo most of the time I do, because I do check every once in a while to see if any whispers came in and I didn't answer. That's why you always see me answer late, because I'm usually talking in Mumble. I don't I don't I don't type. Okay, I don't type. I'm not. Yeah, I'm man. Not what's, that, so. what's going on? This entire podcast and the previous podcast, I've been whispering you in game, and you're just not responding to me. <laughs> because I'm, I am just online recording the actual background right now as we record. What is the background for this Visual Wood podcast? Um, this one is going to be in fr uh, Frost Gorge. It's like very nice. Right, oh. right, right near the, right near the the. The boat in the top left-hand corner? The that, boat? Do you mean the sanctuary? <laughs> the sanctuary or boat, whatever you want to call it. Didn't, uh -huh. we, do, didn't we do a background on the sanctuary in the bottom, le in the bottom left corner before? Um, with yeah, the yeah, cannons yeah. And stuff. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the balloon in the way? Yeah, I remember that, that. That, that. Yeah, that means we should totally do one on the third sanctuary as well, and then you've got the full set. Oh, Awesome. Tune Definitely. in to a future visual to a future visual wood podcast for the third Conan Sanctuary in Frostcarge Sound. <laughs> and I and I guess we ran out of topics. I I think we're done for now. I yeah, for done. sure, man. Um, All right. And we're actually gonna have a break now and go away for Christmas. Are you looking forward to it? Yes, I am very looking forward to it and just just relaxing and not have to worry about anything. Upload my videos so you guys. You know, so I don't happy. have to worry about any of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, you know, so I can I can just relax. Everything's done from now, so I can just upload it and be fine and not have to worry about anything and just enjoy my time with my family and just take a break from, like, sitting there and editing all day and not getting any sleep whatsoever. So yeah, that's man. always good. That's always good. That's what I, the holidays I kinda, all about. I kind of want to level up my engine before I go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I, I really need to level my NG. Like, I really want to. I think I, when I get off now, I'm going to go level my NG right now. I'm going to go find someone. Maybe I should just live stream and find some people to level up with. Because yeah, I'm, cool. I'm generally lonely. Like, I need a guild to level up with. But no if guilds. You, no guilds are, are like, everyone's level 80. Like, no one wants to level with you, you know? 
So, if you yeah. do live stream, tell me. I'll come in your Twitch chat and watch. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, dude. And if been... you do it as well, people in two weeks will be like, "Oh, hey, I was there for that live stream." Yeah, man. It, we we should have do a live stream a long time ago. We should do a live stream. We should totally set that up. But you're always doing something else, right? Right. You don't have always time for me something anymore. Better. Always something else. Yeah, always something always. better. That is the correct term. Thank you for that, dude. We've been recording together for six hours today. Oh my gosh, that's Six that, that's almost uh, Raven when we bulked that yeah, out. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Uh, uh. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching and stay visual. Ridlock has no pants. He. I say. He, I say it like all oh, posh now. Ridlock. Yeah, Ridlock has, has no pants. No panties. I don't, no pants. I'm not wearing any panties, said Ridlock. To Logan. <laughs> you should read a story about that. I'm sure there is one somewhere. Fan, fan uh, fiction? Yeah. That's how you know when you've got a big community around your game, when people are writing fan fiction between the two most prominent male characters. <laughs>